music industry is structured today, there aren't many musicians or bands that can play authentic music that they have written themselves that has deep meaning not just in the lyrics, but also in the music itself. Now I want you to imagine for a second what it would take to be able to do this for 20 years, sell over 12 million records, and become one of the most successful bands of all time. Now this isn't something that just happens by chance. This isn't a coincidence. There are techniques and concepts that we should look at here. And so today we're going to be looking at one of my favorite bands, the Foo Fighters, and more specifically, their song, The Pretender. This is one of their most popular songs and I don't wanna waste any time. So let's not do that and let's dive right into my computer and start analyzing this song. All right guys, so as I said in the introduction, today we're gonna to be taking a look at The Pretender by the Foo Fighters. Let's dive right into this. Alright, so now this song starts off with an electric guitar that's strumming through the chords. We've got a violin and a cello, and then of course the vocals over the top. Now let's dive right in with just the electric guitar part here. Now one interesting thing about this is that this song is in the key of C major, but partway through, as I'll talk about in a bit, it switches to C Lydian. I'll explain what that means in a second if you aren't aware. Let's just listen to what the electric guitar sounds like by itself. <laughs> Now the chord progression for this section of the song is going to be an A minor. In this measure it goes to an A minor 7. And then right here into this measure it switches to a D7 chord. From there it goes into an F major chord. Now if you know anything about music theory then you might be thinking, well why would there be a D7 chord in the key of C major? That doesn't make any sense because number one, there's no F sharp in the key of, of uh, C major. But besides that fact, the D chord is always minor in the key of C major, right? Well, the answer to that is that right here, it actually switches into the key of C Lydian. Now what the Lydian is, is it is actually a mode in a major scale. When you have a Lydian mode, you're actually starting on the fourth note of the scale. So for one measure, it technically switches to the key of G major, but it's actually starting on the fourth note, which is C which makes a really smooth transition into C Lydian. That's why we have the F sharp here. And if you listen, essentially what it is in the key of C major, it's just, it's sharpening the fourth scale degree essentially. So with that in mind, if we just listen to this now. <laughs> So for literally one measure, it's in that it's in that Lydian mode, and then in this measure right here, drops back down into C major, and then that's how it gets back on the F chord. Now real quick, I want to take a second and I want to talk about the strings in this part of the song. So as I said, in this part of the song we've got cello and violin playing. Here's what the string section sounds like by itself. <laughs> The cello is really playing the chords in this part of the song, right? But in the violin part, if we just solo this one by itself, this is what it actually sounds like. Right, it's literally just on one, two, three, and four. Essentially what they're doing there is obviously there's no percussion in this part of the song, so the violin is acting like the percussion, essentially. So now let's start right here and let's take a listen to the vocals by itself. So now for the melody of the song and the vocals, it's going to start on an E and it's going to drop down to a C here, go back up to a D, and then it's going to end on an A. From there we go up to a B, back up to a C, then it drops back down to an A, and then it goes up to the D again, up to the third uh, on the E, and then it goes back down to the C and ends there. Now this part right here pretty much repeats for the most part, except for this ending, which is going to sound like this. 
So essentially what it's doing there is see right here, it starts on the third of the scale and drops down to the C, which is the root, and then it goes down by the scale to the seventh, sixth, and then the fifth here. Now that pretty much wraps up the introduction, so let's go into the first verse. It's gonna sound like this. <laughs> Now first of all, going from the introduction into the first verse, there's a little bit of a tempo change actually. This notation isn't written out properly, uh, but essentially so it starts at 90 BPM, here it switches up to uh, 180 BPM, and then these are actually supposed to be quarter notes and then these are eighth notes. So the drums start off like this. And then on this first measure, the kick introduces this uh, this rhythm that is basically played not throughout the entire song, but throughout most of the song. Now that is actually doubled up by the bass, which sounds like this. And then it's also tripled up by the by the uh, rhythm guitar as well. Now, what essentially happens there is we've got this driving rhythm throughout this part of the song, right? The drums get more busy, the bass gets more busy, and the guitars all get more busy as well. But that driving rhythm is still there, even though there's other things going on in between the rhythm. So incorporating a rhythm like that into, into one of your songs actually would be a pretty good idea too. If you're not really sure how to start off a song or what rhythm you want to use or whatever, try to incorporate something like that in where you have a driving rhythm that you have the drums, bass, and a rhythm guitar all playing. Um, and then they sort of evolve as you go throughout the song. But now since we're looking at the electric guitar part here or the rhythm guitar part, let's take a look at the chords. Now they're gonna seem pretty familiar for the most part actually. So rather than having seven chords in this part, we just have an A minor into an A minor here, into a, an F sharp over D actually, and then it goes back into the F chord here. That's basically it for the verse as far as the uh, chord progression. On top of that, we've got this little counter melody that's playing over the top of it. So essentially what he's doing there is he's playing an E and then he's just going up the up the scale um, of the Lydian mode essentially. So what he's playing there is an E, E, F sharp, E, G, E, A, E, and then he repeats that essentially. Like I said, that's just a little counter melody that uh, Chris Shefflet is playing over the top of it. This is what the first part of the verse sounds like without the vocals in it. See how this melody kind of works over the top of those chords? Even though it's the same thing, it's it's all just a bunch of passing tones essentially that's playing over the top of the chords. So now let's get into the vocals here. It's not a difficult melody, so let's just listen to it by itself. So what Dave Grohl is singing there is he's on the uh, he's on the third of the scale and then he drops down to the second. So now here he adds in the root. See he he starts on the third again and then he just goes down the scale to the to the root, goes back up to the second. And actually this is a uh, it's a lower neighbor. 
Um, if you watched my video on the Eagles, I talked about upper neighbors a little bit. If you missed that video, I would recommend go checking it out. Essentially what a lower neighbor is, is it's a form of a, uh, a non-chord tone. And so you can see here we're on the D, and then it drops down to the E for one part, and then it goes back up to the D and stays there. And then at the end, then it goes back down to the C, and then it lands on an A. Now the last part of this measure right here, this is actually what's called an appoggiatura, which is another uh, non-chord tone. So if we listen to this with just the vocals by itself, see how it starts on this E and then it drops down to the C and then it goes back up to the D here? That's what an appoggiatura is. It's where you have a note and it leaps down or up. It can go in either direction and then it resolves in the opposite direction of where it leaped. That's actually a pretty cool non-chord tone that you can use in your music. Um, and I'd recommend it. Obviously, it resolves pretty well. Now, this second part of the verse here uh, is basically the same as the first one, other than how it resolves here. Now, what it's doing is it's on the D here, drops down to a C, and then goes back up to the E, back to the C. Then here it goes back up to the D, down to the C one more time, back up to the D, and then rather than going down like you would expect it to, it rises up to a G here. That's essentially anticipating the next, uh, the next phrase of this, of this melody line. That's gonna sound like this. So he's just moving it from the third up to the fifth here, and then he actually drops down to the third again and then down to the second here. And then right here, you'll notice he goes, he does the lower neighbor like I was saying earlier, like he did earlier. And then he goes back to the E, and then you'll notice he goes down to a D sharp. Now that's kind of weird. Now what all that he's doing there, because he's actually bending his voice up to, to the E again. So it's just adding a little bit of dissonance there, just to add a little bit of uh, character to the song. And then he ends with this little line here. And then he goes here and he he transitions into the first chorus basically the same way that he transitioned into the second part of the verse. Um, but instead of uh, just going from this part right into this, he doubles this this part right here. Sounds like this. Now let's listen to all of the instruments. Uh, I'm gonna mute the vocals here and let's just go back to the rhythm guitar and let's listen to what happens halfway through this verse. Let's start from right here. Okay, so now this part right here, if you listen, so they go through the verse one time, right? And then they do this. So you can hear that the drums get busy in this part. Instead of doing straight quarter notes on the snare drum, they're switching it over and splitting it up between the hi-hat and the snare. So it becomes essentially just a, a, a basic beat, but the all the variation is in the kick drum and it's playing that same old rhythm. The bass stays pretty much the same as well, but at the end of the lines, Nate Mandel adds in kind of these weird fill things right here. I'll, I'll go ahead and solo them for you. Essentially what he's doing is he's just filling in the places where the chords change basically so right here This fill is going from more of the the less busy part of the verse into the busy part of the verse Then at the end of the a chord he does this slide into the D over F sharp See, and he's actually playing the F sharp in the bass here as well Then at the end of the D over F sharp chord He does a fill into the F chord as well now Let's go ahead and listen to just the bass and drums at this part of the song So now the next part of the verse, let's just take a listen to that. So 
So the drums stay the same into the second part of the verse. Right here, the rhythm guitar and the bass start doing eighth notes here. So right here, the rhythm guitar, actually what it does is it goes and it still plays that rhythm, but in between the notes, it goes into a more palm muted tone. And so essentially what that's doing is it's making it more percussive rather than um, than pitched. Like I said, this the verse just builds up over time. Now, let's talk about this section right here. Now, this is something that I like to call, you can either call it the Foo Fighters buildup, or probably more accurately, it's more of a Dave Grohl buildup. But uh, it's going to sound like this. Dave Grohl will always maybe not always but in in a lot of the music that he writes he will add these buildups in so he's got a d here that slides into an e that goes into an f sharp and then that slides into a g all that he's doing is just going up the scale here again this is in the lydian mode so you can kind of hear the resolution that this has let's listen to it one more time so now the chorus sounds like this So now if you look at the chords in the chorus here, uh, they're actually the same exact chords that we've been playing this entire song. So I think that the main thing that we should talk about here is the vocals. Now the vocal part, really the, vo the melody line for this song is pretty simple. I'll go ahead and solo it by itself so you can take a listen here. All that the vocals are really doing here is that they're they're staying on the sixth scale degree on that A, and then they're going down to the G, which is the five. Ba -da 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 -ba -da -da. So that's basically all that the melody is doing is it's just staying on that on that sixth, and then it's going down a major second to the fifth scale degree. Now let's go ahead and take a listen to the drums and bass by themselves real quick. Uh, just see what they've got going on in this part. So that's kind of an interesting bass part actually now obviously for the most part it's just staying on uh, straight eighth notes here um, and then right here it kind of does this build up kind of that Foo Fighters build up that I was talking about earlier a little bit different from what Dave Grohl generally writes but for the most part it's pretty it's the same idea um, and then it goes up to this F sharp right here. And that's like I was saying, the, the Lydian mode is generally what this song is going to be in. But then right here we have, let's just listen to it by itself. Kind of a funky rhythm that Nate Mendel added in there. All right, drums by themselves here, let's take a listen. So you can see that in this section of the song, uh, he goes from being on the hi-hat and he goes onto the ride for the first half of it. And then he goes up and just, just uh, he's, he's washing the crash cymbal. So he gets out of that, or the whole band gets out of that driving rhythm that's in the verse of this song. And just listen to the kick, or the kick drum part in this section. See how it's boom, gap, boop, boop, gap, boom, boop, gap, boop, boop, gap, boop, gap, boop, boop, gap, boom, boop, gap, boop, boop, gap. Because everything is basically doing uh, straight eighth notes on the just driving the chords, we need something in there that's driving the direction of the song. And so that's where the drums come in with that with that uh, funky bass drum rhythm. So now moving on out of the chorus, we've got this little riff here. So that's just to bridge the gap basically between the chorus and the second verse. Uh, sometimes you want to add these little, I guess you could call them interludes. It's a completely different section from the song, but it's just a one measure gap in between. You know, if they were to just go from the chorus into the verse again, yeah, it would work. It wouldn't sound terrible. But adding in that little riff kind of, it just bridges the gap so there's not a whole lot of confusion there on on the different sections of the song and whatnot. So, and that mainly just stays on an A chord. Now, I don't wanna to spend too much time on the second verse because it's pretty much exactly the same. It's a little bit shorter than the first verse. I think it's about half the length of the first verse. Let's just take a listen to the entire verse here.
the one interesting thing about it is I believe that the second vocal part comes in for this little line right here. The lead vocals are going to be exactly the same as to what they were in the first verse, but then on this measure, the second vocal part comes in. It's going to sound like this. So all that the second vocal part here is doing is it's starting on a D, which is going to be the octave on this first note here. And then it moves up a whole step to an E, and then it moves up a, another whole step to an F sharp, and then up a half step to a G. Now what the lead vocal part is doing in this part is it's actually, so it's starting on the D, so it's an octave. Then it's going down a step to a C. So that's creating, I guess, sort of a C chord. Then it jumps up to an E, which is actually going to be make it a suspended second chord in a way. And then it jumps up to a G, and that's gonna be another octave here. So now moving on to the chorus again. Uh, again, lead vocals and all the instruments are gonna be exactly the same. The only difference is that the second vocal part comes in here. Now let's just listen to the vocal parts uh, together. So now all that it's really doing is it's got the fifth of the chord in the bass because it's on an A minor, right? The A is in the lead vocal part. This is on an E, so it's on the fifth of the chord and that's gonna be in the bass. And then it drops down to a D when the uh, lead vocal part drops down to a G. So there again, it's just keeping the fifth of the chord in the bass. So then right here, you can see in the, in the second vocal part, we've got this appoggiatura again, like I was talking about earlier. Starts on an E, drops down to a C, and goes up to a D. And then in the lead vocal part, it just is in a, it's a lower neighbor, actually, is what it's doing. So sometimes you can use non-chord tones on top of each other like that, where, you know, you've got an appoggiatura in one, in one part, and then you've got a lower neighbor, an upper neighbor, and another part. So that pretty much just repeats throughout the rest of the chorus. And then it goes perfectly into the, the next section of the song, which is going to be the bridge. So bridging the gap between the bridge and the chorus is actually that Dave Grohl build up again. And then it goes into that riff again, right? The riff that bridged the gap between the chorus and the verse is actually the bridge section. We're gonna play the whole thing right now, but listen to how this section builds up because it's all about the build up here. drums and the bass together really illustrate how this buildup works. So let's just take a listen to it by itself. I'm also going to add in the third guitar part here. Um, it gets added into this section of the song. Okay, it's kind of a cool buildup. See how it starts on just one and and it's on off beats there. And then all of a sudden here it adds in on uh, quarter notes. And then right here it gets into the eighth notes. Now the third guitar part is really going to keep the chord quality here. This section of the song is essentially just on one chord, and it's really just on an A chord again. And then everything is just built around that A chord. So you can hear in the vocal part here, it just stays on the root for the most part, and it does a lot of the similar motion to what it's been doing the entire song here.
So this song's melody is essentially based around staying on one note and then either going up or down to another note. Now at this point here, now hear the dissonance there? Now that's basically adding a raised second scale degree and then it's bending it up to the third. Let's listen to that section with the band. So the bridge section goes right into that intro part again uh, that we had at the beginning of the song. And it's exactly the same as it was in the intro, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it. See, it all just kind of fades away, and it's a cool thing that you can add. Now, let's listen to the last measure of this and then into the uh, chorus again. See how it just, like, everything stops and then after a couple beats it goes from nothing to just completely energetic again now everything again is exactly the same so we won't take too much time the one thing that i want to say here is that they actually add in the intro vocal part in here it's going to sound like this So that's a kind of a cool thing too that you can add. If you have like an A part of, or an A section of the song or a B section of the song, you can add in either a guitar riff or some vocals in the middle of like the last chorus. It's going to show that the two sections are different, but they're the same at the same time. Now from here into the chorus, it goes into this little outro section. To go into that, to, or to bridge the cap, gap, we've got this Dave Grohl build up one more time, and then we've got this riff again. Now on the end, just a really tight, da -da, da -da -da -da, just that tight rhythm at the end to kind of remind people, oh yeah, there was this big, ex or this big driving rhythm at the beginning of the song in the verses. And then in the vocals, of course, uh, it's up on the A, which is going to be the root. And then Dave Grohl is just screaming at this point. So anyway, guys, that is The Pretender by The Foo Fighters. Thank you for watching this. I'll see you next time. Thank you for checking out this video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Now, if you did enjoy it, then I want to let you know about a free gift that I've got for you down below in the description. What I've got down there for you is a free chord progression flow chart as well as a free circle of fifths for you. And it's going to help you with your songwriting. I can remember for the longest time that when I first started writing music, I had trouble with just doing that, just starting writing my own music. And what I've found when I'm writing my own music is that the foundation of a song is the chord progression. If you click the link below, not only will you get a free chord progression flowchart, but you will also get free chord progressions that I've written out for you. All that you have to do is pick a key and you can start plugging in the chords and writing your song. Anyway guys, Thank you for checking out this video and we'll see you in the next one.